everybody. Welcome to Drew the Month and happy February. I hope you're all staying safe and warm and uh, you need a tune. So this month I have for you an old time reel. I've actually been playing a lot of old time tunes recently, first of all, because they make me really happy. And second of all, because I'm getting ready to teach one of my four week online fiddle seminars. This one's all about old time tunes. So if you love this tune and you want to do more of this and you're watching this video in the present, well, in my present, uh, which is to say before February 4th, 2021, uh, which is when the class starts, then you can sign up to join me on a whole journey down this particular and glorious rabbit hole of fiddling. I'll put the link in the area below this video so you can find it easily. And if you're watching it in the future, let's dive in and do this tune because I got lots of cool things to show you about this style. This tune is called Glory in the Meeting House. It is a classic of the old time genre. Um, but it's one of those tunes that when I first heard it, it stopped me dead in my tracks. It's got something to it. I don't really even know the word for what it is. There's a power to it. There's an unusualness about it. There's something that commands your attention and is really, um, it's just it's stinking awesome, guys. I don't have better words. So I will play it for you. I first heard this uh, from the playing of Jesse Wells, great Kentucky style fiddler, and since have fallen in love with versions by Raina Gellert, uh, Bruce Mulski, Raina's dad, Dan Gellert, and a whole bunch more. So my version sounds a little like if you put all those guys in a pot and made one great big awesome old time soup out of it. So here it is, Glory in the Meeting House. <laughs> I'll see you later, and if you're ready to learn it, grab your instrument, but wait, check those pegs, because as you might have noticed, this is an alternate tuning tune. Now, it's one of those that doesn't actually screw up how your fingers go, because the string I'm going to change doesn't actually have a part in the melody, so I'm currently tuned. E. I have dropped my G string down to a low E. You can check it to make sure that it matches your high E string. Low E, and then normal, D, A, E string. Yeah, rocking, right? Um, this is sometimes called a drop bass kind of tuning, where I've taken my bass string and just dropped it to whatever I want. I can drop it to other notes if I wanted to play a tune in a different key, but this one's in E minor, so I'm really going to create that big, fat E drone that I can use through the whole thing. Okay. So yeah, E minor, you've got your low string. You may need to pause this video and tune because um, it could take a minute. Your E string, uh, your D string, what string is this? Your now E string will feel like it's flapping in the breeze a little bit because it's so loose, but it's really a cool sound. All right, so we're gonna learn this slowly and the first time I'm gonna play it through, I'm gonna keep a lot of the drones out so you can hear the pure melody. 
Um, but I am going to keep those rocking bowings in. We're going to learn this with the bow choreography really carefully because that's what makes it sound old time. All right, so here's the A section. It goes like this. <sighs> melody true with pretty much all old time tunes the melodic nature is just so simple and pure and all the intricacy comes from the bow all right let's break this down a little bit um in the a section my part one goes like this that's it it's so short right just up the e minor scale but the bowing is key here right so a lot of styles might just do this separate bow and then long, right? But there's actually a little scoop slur in there. Check it out. One, two, three, and now I'm going to... I call that a scoop slur because I'm scooping that little A up into the long note. You see that? One, two, three, scoop. And then we have a little chug on the end there. And when I scoop, I actually amplify that feeling in the bow with my left hand by doing a little slide on my first finger. Not a big one, because that would sound a little comical. Let's put that politely. It's not nice. Just a very slight, quick slide in that, that amplifies that scoop. Do that with me again, part one of the A section. Up the scale and a little scoop. Good, do it one more time. Ready, and... Nice. Part two, we're gonna work our way back down. So that's a pattern that we've seen a lot in past two of the months. I call it a Jaca Frera, cause it's Frera Jaca, but backwards. Jaca Frera. Everybody see that? So I'm walking down the scale. And then skipping back to where I started. Happens in so many tunes. Alright, do that again. Yeah, so you notice, again very simple, um, melodically, but bowing wise, I'm doing a slur that I call the hook three. We've done it in past tune of the month videos, so you can always go back and check those out to get a better grip on it. But very care uh, quickly, uh, hook three is three separate, three slur, and then there are two extras. Check it out. One, two, three, slur three starting up bow. One, two, three, and here's my extra, and I'll finish the next bar ready to go down bow. This bowing is used in many different styles because it gives that really awesome same little scoop feel that we did at the beginning. A little bit of offbeat kick and it really rocks across the string in this case because there's a string crossing in it. One, two, three. Do it one more time, part two with the hook three. One, two, three, slur. There you go. Good. So now part one's gonna come back. It's a little variation this time. All right, so it's still up the scale. But when you get here, rather than just staying on the B, give it a little skip on the top. Now, of course, I'm not just going to bow it separate like that. I'm going to bow it now with the opposite of a scoop. I'm going to do a glide slur is what I call it. I'm going to slur the first three on the down bow. One, two, three. And that's because that gives it a gliding feel. We've also done glide slurs in past tunes of the months. So it acts as a contrast of the scoops that we did earlier. Do it again, part one again, this is the one prime with the glide. Good, and then we're gonna finish with a little ending. The easiest notes ever, 
but here is the most important bowing gesture you're going to find in old time music. This is the rocking bow. Right? Now it comes, if you see it slurred on a page somewhere, it'll just look like down, up, up, down. Right? Like one down bow and then some sort of three eighth note equivalent for the up bow. But it's what's going on inside that up bow that's really important. Do you hear how there are actually four impulses on that? One, two, three, four, land. And that's because I'm doing this scooping, rocking, there are lots of names for it, bow. So I go down, up. Now I'm going to zoom my bow on the up bow and a slow up. See that? Down, up, zoom. And now how I zoom my bow, it's both with my speed and I'm leaning a little bit extra on my index finger. Vroom, vroom, to give it kind of a whoosh feel, right? Give it a try with me. Try again. Down, up, whoosh. Now if I want to add the rocking part to that, I'm going to, on that whoosh, I'm going to lean my index finger so much and nudge my arm level over to pick up the low drone. You hear that? Try with me. That's the rocking bow. Down, up, whoosh with the double stop, and finish. And that's the whole A section. Oh, there's a lot of choreography in there. If you want to see any of those parts again, of course you can rewind the video, the magic of YouTube, right? But now let's put the whole A section together with that choreography. All right, part one starts with a scoop. Scoop. Here's the hook three. One, two, three, slur. Now glide. And here it is, the rocking bow. Go try it again. Scoop. Hook three. Wide. Ending. Go do it again. Scoop. Hook three. Wide. Rocking bow. that gets faster, I get a little more swing to my arm, and anytime I'm starting one of those slurs, I actually can lean and pick up a drone string just like we did on the ending, right? That scoop ends up being a drone double stop. I have my first finger on both strings, right? choosing to play my drones with the character or the shaping slurs of the piece. Do you see that? I use it to emphasize the scoop, the hook three, the glide, and of course the rocking bow. So this is where the magic starts to happen and it's a lot of choreography crossing your string and to do that remember that you've got two devices that will help you cross your strings. The first is your arm level, right, where you're moving your um, whole arm. I'm doing it from my elbow, but it's really easy on my arms working together. And the other is how much I'm leaning on my index finger, because that can help me pick up a string that's right next door just by leaning a little further in. So you can work with both of those tools to get the double stop speaking. All right, so that's the whole A section. Let's do the B section. I'll go slowly. And again, simplify it down to the melody, no extra drones, but see if you can start to pick up these bow choreographies. Where are the scoops, where are the glides, and my favorite, the rocking bows. Here it comes. rewinding the video and playing that a few times with me, couldn't you? All right, so let's break it down. Um, here's part one. Mm 
months and you've probably done it in past of your tunes. A lot of times a scale will just leave a note out. I call it leave a hole in it. In this case the hole for fiddlers it's your second thing. Right? And now here it comes. That's a rocking bow isn't it? Now this is a cool thing. I am actually using my fourth finger and creating the rock between the unison fourth finger and the open E string. See that? So, right? So here's down. The first up is my fourth finger. The rocking bow is my open string. And then when I land, I play both of them together. It almost doesn't make sense when you break it down that slowly, does it? You have to, the slower you do it, the more you can think, but the less the gesture sounds like it's supposed to. So we'll just do it slowly one or two more times. Down, fourth, open, and both together. Do it again. Do it again. Down, four, open. Down, four, open. And don't forget to whoosh your bow in the middle of that up bow. Right? Down, up, whoosh. That's what makes the rocking bow happen. All right? Let's do all of part one together. The upper E minor scale with a hole in it. And whoosh. Go do it again, part two. I'm oh, sorry, part one. And if I want to add some drones, I can pick up that E minor drone by putting my first finger on both strings. Already that adds a lot, doesn't it? Put your first finger on both strings, do it again. Now it's sounding good, all right, here we go. Part two starts the same way. And then very familiar, from the A section, right? So I would call that a cloud part two. It happens in both the A section and the B section, that little Shaka Land. Good. Do part two of the B section. Here comes cloud. And when I land, I am again using my E chord, my first finger on both strings to pick up that drum. Okay, now we're back to part one. Right, following standard fiddle tune form, right? Part one, part two, part one ending. I didn't call that out in the A section because we do it basically every tune of the month. But if you're just joining us, that might be new to you. It's true for so many fiddle tunes, so it's easy to help you remember. Uh, so we just did the part one again, and we need the ending. Yeah, so there are two little pickups, and we end up this high G is what we've been looking for this whole time, haven't we? That's the second finger that we haven't used. And the lock. That's the scale with a hole in it again. Long. Long scale with a hole in it. And Jaca Ferra finish. Yeah, do the whole ending. Goes up to the high G. Long. Long scale with a hole. Jaca Ferra. Good. And as usual, I can pick up any drones that I want to emphasize those big gestures. ending. 
you can do that. It's a little variation that works quite well. All right, folks, that's the whole B section. Any parts of that you want to see again, rewind the video. Let's put the whole B together now together. Well, the tune together with us together is what I mean to say. That sounded weird. Okay, here we go. E minor, the upper voicing. Scale with a hole in it. Scoop. The part two, same start. Shaco Ferreira. as you need with you um, and let's go on to the very ending all right so we've kind of been working up in the register right the a part was down very low the b part is using this middle range and now the c part is going to use the high range i'll play it slowly in there that ending keeps coming back right Jaco for a finish and you probably also heard the part one part two part one and ending all right so you might already have it and you don't need a little breakdown but just in case we'll break it down quickly so I start up here all right so this is a Frera Jaca Frera Jaca up the scale and then skip back down to where I belong and then up to my fourth finger. Now notice, of course, I'm doing just a little tasteful slide into that to help emphasize it. And then. It's another Frere Jaca. This one starts on my finger, or second finger. Frere Jaca. Up the scale. Skip back to where I started. and then down a scale with a hole in it. So that's pretty easy notes, but I'm gonna use the hook three bowing. One, two, three, Good, let's do that again, hook three. One, two, three, Yeah, so let's put all of part one together. For a jaca up to the high B, and then our hook three. Here comes hook three. One, two, three, slur. Yeah, do it again, part one. One, two, three, slur. Nice, try it one more time. Here comes part two. This one's just going to go straight up the scale. And scoop. Hey, that's pretty cool. It's very, it's using pieces of things we've already done, right? Up the scale to the B. And now here's my scoop. 
and I'm scooping again, that's the unison scoop between my fourth finger E and my open string E. Four, open, and then both of them as a double stop to finish. Try that again. So it's the G, four, open. Yeah, do it again, scoop. All right, put all the part two together, up the scale to your B, and do that scooping rock and bow. section. Scale with a hole in it. Now if I want to do a little variation instead of doing this, sometimes I'll skip that first G altogether and I'll just play. I'll play that it's a unison fourth finger and open E. Do that with me, the unison variation. nice because it's working on those E drones again. This whole tune is in E minor. The more we can drone E's, the more power we lend to that root, right? So that's done a lot in the ending of, well, really it could be done in the B section or the C section. I usually like to wait till the C, but mix it around. There's a lot of variation making in old time music, so use your taste. Guys, we have the whole C section. Should we put it all together? Starts with the Frera Jaca and up to the high B. Part one. Here's your hook three. Part two, up the scale. And scoop it. Up the scale. And the famous ending. we'll do just the simple melody first and then put in fancy things like bowings or ornaments. With your old time tunes, your bowing is so, so foundational to how the tune starts, or how the tune sounds, rather. Um, you really need to start just with the bowing in because if you do any old bowing and then you wonder, well, why doesn't this sound old time? It's a lot harder to go back and put in the bowings that are gonna make it sound more old timey. So this may feel like the long way around, but trust me, it's gonna pay off. It works really, really well. And these gestures, the more you amplify the tempo as you get comfortable, the better it's gonna sound, the more old timey swingy it's gonna feel. Because a lot of these gestures are based off momentum and the quicker you're moving, the more they're gonna amplify. If this feels like a lot of bowing, you're right. And if you wanna do a lot more bowing, um, I mentioned at the top of this video that I have a, a four week fiddle seminar online about old time fiddling. I also have a bunch of other classes that I teach, including classes on bowing that I call Bow Like a Pro. And I offer those quite often, actually one coming up in March of 2021. For those of you in the future, sorry you missed it. There will be more coming up. Um, so we get into these bowing patterns across all styles and they really are used a lot of places as you know from your past fiddle experience or watching other tunes of the month where these same patterns appear in Canadian style and Irish style and um, klezmer music, right? So the more you know about these patterns, the more you can express yourself stylistically when the tunes change origin and it's really fun. So I hope this gives you lots to work with. You can go back and play along with uh, my version at the very beginning of this video or go look up the versions that I mentioned that I love, Raina Gellert, Jesse Wells, 
Bruce Molsky, lots of other folks play this. Um, great tune to have in your repertoire, and I hope you guys have fun and enjoy it. I'll look forward to seeing you next month.